It's a fundamental issue. I will agree with them, but I will say we have to create an environment where people feel that bleaching is not necessary. I, I can give you an example. Give me an example. I have a small mentorship program that I run, mm -hmm. and there's this beautiful little black girl in the class. Mm -hmm. So one day, uh, I noticed that she was sad during the session. Mm -hmm. So I asked her to stay back, and we talked. So I was getting into what was going on. Anyway, I brought up this little uh, video on YouTube that I tend to use sometimes to make a, a point and it was talking about this girl in this mirror who is always disliking herself and the mirror the, the, the a reflection dragged her into the mirror and the ref, ref, reflection came out and was like you're, you're not kind to me so I'm going to live my life you can stay in the mirror so I, I, I was talking to the young lady and she was like I feel invisible sometimes mm. so when I got into that I realized that she didn't feel beautiful she didn't feel valued and I was so heartbroken and it's one of the reasons why I have that mentorship program because it's sad that we are not empowering our young ladies. Mm -hmm. It's really, really sad. She was, she was dejected. She, she felt broken. Mm -hmm. And uh, I haven't spoken to her mamas yet, but I plan to. Mm -hmm. Because I think we need to create a space where it doesn't matter whether your skin are, is black or white or brown or gray, but we are supposed to empower our children. Correct. We are supposed to. And especially when they have darker skin tones, because even the, the little ones, as young as her, she, I think she's about 10, mm -hmm. the, the little girls who are lighter skin, they are, the, the, those light skin ones mock the darker skin ones. Mm. It's, it's, it's in our DNA that if you are darker, you're not good enough. You're not beautiful. And one of the things we have to start teaching our darker skin people is that that mockery comes from fear. It does. And so when really people, does. if you really were nothing and could mean nothing, there you go. nobody would spend the time to pay you any to attention. mock you. All right. The time they spend to mock you is because they are trying to diminish you because mm -hmm. they know how great you are. There you go. Then a stone rotten mango. Yeah, there you so go. So I like to tell, and, and that's coming from our slavery days. From then no say day. black people them never easy. We and powerful. part of correct and part of trying to keep us down was to attack the things that they feel would would, would affect our spirits. Strips, strips and we, and we so we for let it go. Yeah. We for, so and it's centuries of it. It's hard to be centuries but we have to start somewhere. Yeah. How did you I mean because these struggles must have impacted your early years even in school and college didn't it it did but it's interesting all these mind mindset work right mm -hmm. the issue is there and it's affecting you but you don't know that it is affecting Correct. you so it affected me in terms of self esteem and confidence and um, feeling like I'm good enough, good enough. Mm -hmm. and that good enough thing, it's, it determines what we do with our lives and how much we persevere and how much we think we're worth and what we think we're valued mm -hmm. or value is. And uh, I had some amount of confidence and self-worth because I always walked with my head up, but deep down, there was something under the surface preventing me from really stepping into my power fully mm -hmm. so I would get knocked down and I wouldn't get back up you know for example when I was 20 I started NCU first semester went on finished paid for I couldn't figure out how to go forward and, and I stopped I didn't go back Wow. You know, and there were so many things because I grew up poor, mm -hmm. right? Mother didn't have it, father didn't care. So I grew up poor. I didn't have anybody to say, you can do this, or you are worth it, or here's what you should do. So each time I would get knocked down, I would just stay down, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. because I didn't have enough strength 
to get back home to get back home and yeah it, and it's not that it wasn't there it's just i was i didn't, you didn't know. know to tap into it didn't know to tap into mm -hmm. it. yeah i think and, and, and i think uh, if you believe that this is my place my place is down then when you get knocked down you say yeah, well you stay, stay down because yeah. you think that well this is where i'm supposed to be and there is no better for me mm -hmm. how did you overcome that so life went on i i had my first child when i was just about to turn 22 mm -hmm. and naturally it got harder from there because here comes more expenses mm -hmm. and not enough education to get you the kind of job to pay for the expenses so it got more challenging but i did start ue open campus within that same period of time Good. so the ambition never left mm -hmm. i always had the drive to want something more and to continue pushing for something more but that going to ua situation became a disaster because <laughs> i took student loan and then there was some separation between open campus and ue and that process of them finding the money took about four years Ooh. yes so about four years i was back and forth from from my home to to ue to try to figure out what was going on what? and at one point a debt collector called me mine to go <laughs> and um and i was like i don't i don't owe anybody anything mm -hmm. <laughs> because I, I couldn't continue school because they couldn't find the money and i didn't have that amount of money to pay back so i could continue school mm -hmm. so i was kind of like stuck in the middle it got to a point where I just stopped going to UA to see what they were doing until one day they called me and said the check was ready to go to student loan. I tell them they have to figure it out because I'm not coming for mm -mm. any check. But, so that went on for a while and then life was happening. I was I worked for a Western Union during a period of time and then I went into real estate. And then my son was born in 2016. I came out of real estate, took some time off and did some work from home jobs. But then during this time, working from home,